Hey, Kevin here, Top 100 Financial Advisor, two-time author, one-time bestseller. And today I want to primarily focus on some of the earnings that we had talked about on yesterday. So yesterday we had some weird issues with the camera. I also look sloppy, so um, as most of us do without haircuts. So um, that part we're going to have to deal with. So you will not see my face. Um, you will, however, see the screen, or at least you should. Um, so I am double checking that now. You should be able to see the Starbucks screen. Go ahead and hit that share button. I am going to do the same right now, and I'll be checking for any questions or comments that you guys may have. All right. And shared. So make sure that you share it. Um, I do appreciate those things. We want to make sure that we are growing the channel and everything and make sure that everyone is knowledgeable about the stock market and what we can do about it. So first, I'm going to go back to the screen that I showed you guys yesterday. And I've written down three stocks on the left-hand side that we are going to discuss. So again, we talked about earnings. We talked about how stocks can be very, very weird during this time of the year. So hopefully you should be able to see it. Um, but we talked about how Google, Pepsi, Starbucks, and others were going to report their earnings. And for those, again, that didn't know what earnings were, you missed out on yesterday's video. This is essentially the first time, at least for this year, with the effect of COVID-19, that customers are telling us, or customers, companies are telling us, hey, here's how much money we made or lost during this time. And it is a very big indicator of what may be to come for other companies. And also there's some things that you want to know as a new investor as to what to look out for, how these things could affect other stocks, and the differences between what you're choosing and, and how they matter. So first, uh, first up is Starbucks. So Starbucks did rise today, but obviously they took a big hit. This is one of the first times in the past 11 years, and I'll, I'll do this, um, one of the first times in 11 years that they've actually lost money in same store sales. So same store sales is, you know, I had five stores. How well did those five stores do? I'm not counting the brand new stores because obviously they're brand new. So that's one metric that a lot of retailers use. Walmart, any, any place that has stores usually tracks that metric. So the stock still did go up. I'm not exactly sure why. I want to read more into that. But again, Starbucks did rise today. Um, we can see here, again, CNBC is one of my favorites for understanding what's going on. So as we see here, we said their second quarter global same store failed 10%. So let's fail 10%. That's not great. Um, they had companies give what's called an outlook to tell us what they expect to happen in early April. They pulled that off the table altogether. And then sales have improved as they've started to build back out in China. So this is good news. We had talked a little bit about this yesterday. This is good news for Starbucks. Should you invest in it? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, so the information is here. Again, CNBC is one of my favorite resources to really read and understand in plain English what is going on with particular stocks. Um, you can see here their sales dropped 5% to $6 billion as they closed cafes and government officials told them to stay home. Um, it estimates that it lost $915 million during that time, All right? So the good thing is I don't really see Starbucks as being quite replaceable per se. I think once things fix themselves, they are likely to be okay, maybe more so than other businesses. But these are the things you want to know. Um, it's always, always very, very important to understand the business of the company, meaning not just they sell coffee, but like, what else do they sell other than just coffee? What else do they do? How are they prepared for certain things that may be seen or unseen? And this was the big thing that I had talked about a little bit yesterday for Pepsi. It is a difference between knowing and loving the product than understanding the actual business. What most people didn't understand between Pepsi and Coca-Cola is this. Pepsi has a lot of their money in other business lines. So Frito-Lay, the snacks, all of those things, guess what? People are home and they're still buying chips. More of Coca-Cola's business is more so in restaurants. So 
places that have found drinks like at McDonald's, a lot of different restaurants where you can go, just go to the fountain and press a little uh, five guys is one of those that don't have a drive through. So you can only walk in. I don't know if they're closed or not, but you, you go, you press the cool machine and it comes out with some amazing minute made plus Sprite plus whatever combination. That's all well and fine, except when a lot of these stores are closed, they're not buying that product. Therefore, Coca-Cola is being hurt a lot more than a Pepsi, because even though Pepsi has those same agreements with some stores, they don't have as much. Pepsi has offset that by selling snacks, junk foods, and a bunch of other things that go with Pepsi. That's why Pepsi has been a lot better off. So just looking at it and say, oh, I love Sprite, I'm going to get Coke, and ignore Pepsi shows a big mistake that a lot of new investors do that causes you to lose more money because you don't understand the business you just understand the product so i want to show you guys this here and it's another thing i teach all of my students how to do so if you do, if you haven't done that make sure you click the link above um here is pepsi and coke over the last two years you can see pepsi has made 34 percent over the past two years versus coca-cola down here at just eight percent there's a big difference between 34% and 8%. If you go, let's just say the last six months, which includes COVID-19, you'll see that Pepsi, both of them lost, right? The entire economy, the entire stock market has lost money. But Pepsi has only lost 0.23%. That's not even a whole percent that Pepsi has lost. They've actually done pretty well compared to Coca-Cola. That's down almost 13%. So that's the difference between the two. Even though you and I know them as just the drinks, Pepsi versus Coke, and that's all we think about as consumers. But as a as an investor, you want to understand the business. When you don't understand the business, you can lose out as an investor. So that's the difference. These are the things that you have to look at and understand before you jump into a stock. That's why I tell people, don't just jump into an airline just because. That doesn't really mean anything. You want to understand how is this business structured and how companies can be different. I talked about yesterday how JetBlue could be different than Spirit and maybe different than Southwest and maybe different from American Airlines. They're all in the same industry, but they may they might make money different ways. We know Southwest doesn't charge bag fees. Maybe they got some money somewhere else. You know, maybe they have different a different cost structure. Maybe their planes are cheaper. Maybe they bought fuel at a different time, which means that that may be cheaper. All of these all of these things factor into how well a stock is going to do. But the best way before you get in and lose money, before you get in and just choose something just because you think it's great, you want to be able to run a test similar to this and do some other research to ensure that you're in the right spot. You want to make sure that your investing is going to work for you specifically. The best way to do that one is signing up for my event. So you can go to buildingbread.com slash wealth. You can click the link right above. We're teaching a class on building generational wealth. So I'm going to show you how do you go through and select some of the best stocks that work for you, but also how do you make sure with your 401k, with your savings, with anything that you've built that you can actually leave a legacy. I have seen many cases, some of we've talked about yesterday, where people have not done that well, where they started something, they built up a lot of wealth and it, it didn't go to the family and friends that they wanted to. It went to court, it went to taxes, and whatever was left over was given to family years after the fact. I still don't know if Prince's estate, the musician Prince, has been settled yet. It probably hasn't because that was a lot of money. Um, when you don't do those things properly, you can kind of get caught up. Um, so I don't see any questions yet. I will take some in just a, a, few, a few seconds. Um, and then the last one I want to talk about was Google here, which the parent company is Alphabet. This one, they the stock still is expected to go up tomorrow because they they uh, they talked about after the fact. Um, however, they said that digital ad sales had gone down significantly over the quarter, which means that that's one. It used to be one of Google's biggest business areas. It is still a large one, but it's not as big as it used to be. So we know that Google sells the following things, or they own the following things. We know they have YouTube. We know they have the Android phones, which is also the Pixel. We know they have Chromebooks. They have the, uh, the speakers. I'm just gonna put Smart Home. 
They obviously have search. I know this is hard to read. Sorry, guys. So here are just some of the things that they own. So it comes to you've got YouTube. That's one thing that they own, but that's that's search based. Um, that's their, where their advertising revenue comes from. They also have, obviously, when you Google things, they got Google Maps. They got tons of things. But when it comes to hardware, they have the Chromebooks. They've got the, the phones and all the Android operating systems. And then they have the smart home, like the, the Hey Google speakers. So these are ways that they are diversified. So when it comes to ad revenue, when their ad revenue drops, YouTube is not making them as much money, neither is search because those ads come up. All they have left is really the smart, the home, smart home, the Chromebook, and a lot of the, the hard, the hardware, the phones. So while their advertising revenue has gone down, at least they have those three products to kind of prop them up. And that's just a few that just come up the top of the head. Those are things that you want to be aware of. Now, on the converse, the reason I'm bringing this up is because if Google's ad revenue was down significantly and they advertise on all things, essentially social media, right, especially YouTube, the number one or two biggest site in the world, well, you want to be concerned about Facebook then because Facebook's entire business is based on advertising and advertising on a free platform. If Google's went down, it is likely that Facebook's has gone down too. The problem is Facebook doesn't have a lot of hardware yet. They don't make phones. They don't make speakers. They do have the um, the one video thing, but that just came out earlier this year or, or last year. But that's really it. That's really it. So how is Facebook going to recover? Now, this is a guess. I don't, I don't know because earnings hasn't come out. I don't know for a fact that their ad revenue has been hurt that badly. It could be different, but these are the things as an investor on, on the understanding the business part of it. Those are the things you want to know and understand before jumping into it. So is advertising revenue the only thing that Facebook makes their money off of? If so, how much? The same thing with Pepsi. Yes, Pepsi and Coke make a lot of money off of drinks. However, there's a reason why, why Pepsi is up 34% while Coca-Cola is down 12 because Pepsi also sells chips. That's essentially it. They also they also sell chips and snacks and Coca-Cola doesn't do it that much. That's the difference between the two. So in this instance, it could be, could be that Google slash Alphabet is the Pepsi and Facebook is the Coca-Cola. That is a possibility. So these are the things when you're looking to invest in something, you want to understand the business of it and how does this company make money? It's not just, oh, I like them. Oh, I'm familiar with it. That gets people that gets people hurt in the stock market that I like. I really like Sprite. I like, you know, I like I like both. Actually, I like Pepsi and Coke. I'm one of those people, but I like Sprite more than anything else. So I would jump and do Coca-Cola. That's just, but that's not looking at the business of it. So when you look at the business, you want to make an actual informed decision. The best way to do that is one, you can go to Yahoo Finance. That's fine. My courses are even better <laughs> because I walk you through it uh, in a very, very simple manner. But you want to join the email list. We'll talk about this tomorrow um, if I get a chance to write that email tonight. And then we'll continue talking about this chart here. This is the earnings chart. We're going to continuously focus this week on this. I want to show you guys how this moves the market, what's important, what's not important, and show you how to avoid losing money, um, losing big money anyway, and reduce those losses, but also how to be a more informed investor, how to be more confident in understanding what's happening in the market around you. Um, lastly, again, make sure that you sign up for the event, uh, buildingbread.com slash wealth. I'm teaching a session on building generational wealth. So how do you choose the right stocks to build generational wealth? How do you grow? And more importantly, how do you protect your money moving forward? No one wants to work for 30 years and not have anything to pass down. No one wants to do that. So I'm going to show you some very, very easy ways for you to get that done. So make sure you sign up for it. Early bird tickets are 25. Once those are out, I think tickets go up to like 35 or 45. And there's a very limited number. Um, in fact, there may only be like 28 or so left. So I would check that out as soon as you can. Um, so I'm going to go and check some questions that we have here. Should I wait if I want Pepsi for a long-term investment? Your chart looks like I missed the, the cut to buy. Um, 
I mean, it it really, I'm not a market timer. So I, I'll say that. And the way I look at it is 10 years from now, the price that it is today is going to look low. So there's there's that. Um, you know, I can go back here and I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating to, to buy Pepsi because you have to know what your, your goals are, right? So right now, like this would have been perfect if you could have timed it out, but that's hard to do. So right now, it looks like it's it's really high, right? But if I go to two years, now it's even higher. If I go to five years, now it's even higher. So like the longer I wait, like it looked high when it was back here in 2018, but now it's higher. It looked high when it was here in was this late 2018. It looked high in 2019. Like the, the longer it goes, the it only I'm not gonna say it only gets higher, but usually. Um, the stock just continues to grow. That's how the market moves over time. You're going to hit those dips, but there's no way, no one, no one in the world would have been like, oh, look, in March, there's going to be this disease that's going to drop. This is the time to get in. The best way, and I've told people this before, is if you choose something quality, make sure that you're doing it on a regular basis. So if it's four times a year, if it's once a month, if it's only once a year, you want to be consistent in that investing process. So don't try and time it and just get it at the perfect drop because it's that's going to be difficult. It could drop tomorrow. How far does that have to drop for it to be the right price? We don't, That we don't know. Um, so the best case is just continuously invest over time. So if you think Pepsi is a quality stock, then go for it, but also be consistent with it. So if I put in some in April, I'll put in some in May, June, July, August, so on and so forth. Whether it's hundred dollars a month, two hundred dollars a month, whatever it is you can afford. But the important thing is to be consistent. It's not going to be I put in my stimulus check one time and I came back the next year I was rich. That's unlikely to happen. So you want to be consistent. The timing part of it doesn't matter as much as most people think uh, think that it does. So again, even if and I'll show you this, I'll go back to it one more time. If we go back to, so 40, you would have made 42% over the past five years. That's what you're investing way back here in 2015. That does not say right here in, what is that, May of 2018 that you invested right here in this little, this little trough, which would have been great. But if you invested back here in 2015, you still would have made 42%. And that does not include these huge dips. So the timing part of it doesn't matter. The good thing, the most important thing is whatever you do, be in it for the long term if it is something quality. All right. I think that was all the questions. If you guys have any more, please let me know. Um, I will respond to them at the earliest convenience. Um, but again, thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for sharing. Make sure that you sign up for the event, buildingbread.com slash wealth. I want to teach you guys how to build generational wealth from the bottom up. I'm also going to have a friend. That is Tremaine Wills from Mind Over Money. She is going to help you psychologically and um, financially to get your money together and kind of help you with the cash flow part of it. A lot of people say that, hey, I don't have the money to start investing. I don't feel like I have the money to do X, Y, and Z. Guess what? She can help you figure that part of the game out. So again, thank you guys for coming out. I will see you guys later. Uh, actually, I'll see you guys tomorrow as we continuously uh, track this, um, the earnings release calendar and see what's next um, on the list. So I'll talk to you guys later. See you.